Okay, good morning, folks. It's Rob White again, uh, president of Dahlstrom Roll Forum. We're here today with part three of our series on the anatomy of a roll forming line. If you remember, part one was the uncoiler and the coil specs. Uh, part two was the uh, pre-punching and the straightening process for the coil strip. Part three is gonna be the actual forming, using the roll form mill to form the shape. Forming process, we've got a roll forming mill. Mills can be either uh, left to right or right to left, depending on where you want to put the mill in your, in your plant and where you want the operator to be. This happens to be a left to right mill. The back part of the mill is driven by electric motors and gearing. That's what creates the, the force on the material through the shafts. The front uh, stands on a roll former are removable which allows us to put the tools on. Two of the most important specifications of a roll forming mill are the diameter of the shaft. This happens to be a two and a half inch diameter mill and the number of forming passes on the mill. This mill happens to have 24 forming passes. The more forming passes we have, the more complex of a shape we can do because we have to impart a certain amount of work per station to form that shape. If you can see here, there's a progression where the, the, the flat sheet gradually, after pass after pass, will, will make its way to the final shape. The distance between the lower shaft and the upper shaft is also important. It allows for larger, in this case, on this mill, it allows for larger diameter roll tools, which means we can form deeper shapes because as the shape gets deeper, the diameter of the rolls, both top and bottom, have to be larger to accommodate that, that profile. The horizontal distance between the forming passes is important too. If it's too close, you're not gonna get the uh, transition from pass to pass that you want for that particular shape. And if they're too far, you're gonna lose the pass to pass capturing that you need for that shape. Again, this is the, the, the roll forming line. This is what really creates the, the, the bending value. Um, but because once the tools are created, it doesn't matter if there's two bends or 15 bends on there, the process is the same. That's where it starts to realize the benefit of roll forming is complex angles, radiuses, and the number of bends can be done in the same process it would take to just do two bends. We'll go ahead and turn on the mill and we'll step back. We've, we've, we've removed the guarding today and we've turned it off for safety purposes, but I'm gonna step back now and, and turn, have, have the operator turn the mill on so you can actually see the forming process. Just to describe a little bit more about the actual roll form tooling and how the machine is set up, I've got a little demonstration here. Uh, anybody who knows anything about roll forming knows that the setup process is the critical part of the whole process. Uh, it can take anywhere from four hours on a simple part to uh, eight to nine hours on a complex part. So what happens is we remove the, uh, the outboard stands and we expose the shafts. The shafts are the driven part of the forming process. There are roll tools on the bottom shaft and there are roll tools on the top shaft. And you can see here that the tools are keyed and, and of course the reason they're keyed is to be able to get that driving force from the uh, gear system behind. And so the, the roll tools themselves, you can see, are tool steel, they're all marked for the progression from uh, forming pass one to the final forming pass. And they're inserted onto the shaft in that way. It's very critical to make sure, obviously, that the correct passes are in the correct sequence. That's why the marking of the tools is so important and the staging of the tools when they're brought to the line in a simple way to um, make sure that they're on. Um, and once, uh, once the tools are on, 
There are spacers that are used to make sure that we take up the appropriate roll space. And then these outboard stands are replaced and we bring the top stand down and we get that mesh between the upper roll and the lower roll. And that gapping there is absolutely critical. Um, we use feeler gauges to make sure that it's within thousands of, of the material thickness. And that's what really controls the consistency and the repeatability of roll forming. So again, top, top shaft, bottom shaft, upper rolls, lower rolls, and a brief description of the setup process.